Hi, my name is John Paul Raj and my mission in life is to make the learning of math fun. So if you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. On this video, I'm going to talk about vectors and transformations. It's a unit from IGCC 0607 International Math Course and we are going to talk about how we can use the TN by CX2 to do those geometrical transformations. Let's start. Before we begin, I must make it clear that everything that I'm going to share today is not going to be possible in the press to test mode. So you can use these features for your homework, for your class assessments, or if there's some test in class that the teacher decides that, you know, you can use a calculator in the normal mode, not in the exam mode, then you can use these features, but not in the press to test mode. Having said that, let's get started. So this is my CAS version of the TN by CX2, and I'm going to go ahead and add a graph page. All right, I'm going to add a graph page. I'm going to hit escape to get out of that, uh, that entry line of the function. And our main idea is to use the, uh, the geometry tools, right? That's where all the construction and the transformations are there, right? So you can see all the points and lines, the shapes, and we're going to work on this transformation uh, tab particularly. Uh, in the press to test mode, although one and two will be on, which is the points and lines and the shapes, but uh, the measurement, the construction and the transformation uh, tab uh, under the geometry menu is going to be locked. So you can't use this in the press to test mode. However, like I said, if it's a class assessment, if it's a homework assignment, you can always use this uh, these features to check your work. Or if it's a test in class where the teacher has allowed you to use the calculator in the normal mode without any press to test restrictions, you can use this technique to check your work. Correct? So let's get started. Okay. Now the first thing to do is to get familiar with the geometry tools, uh, especially something to do with points and lines. So what we're going to do is that let's just draw a point first. Okay. So when you go and draw a point somewhere, it helps to have this grid. Okay. So if you're wondering why I have a grid and you don't have a grid, uh, perhaps you should just go to menu and settings and there's something called line grid here. Uh, I think by default it says no grid, but if you say line grid, it will really help, especially when you're doing something to the geometry. It helps to have that grid there. Now, once you have the point and if you don't have the label, like, you know, A, point A, the label for point A, then again, you need to go and check that from the settings. Uh, somewhere down there, it will say automatically label points. And so if you check that uh, box, again, uh, by default, I think it's unchecked. So check that box and automatically you'll get the label. But if you don't have the label, you can always label it by going to uh, going through menu and actions and uh, you can put the text box and label it whatever point you want to call it that, okay? So now I have a point A there. I can uh, record its um, coordinates and uh, its coordinates. I just uh, go there and hover over the point and that gives me the coordinates of the point A. Now, if I move the point somewhere, you can see that the coordinates will change accordingly, okay? These are some of the basic things of geometry I think I should let you know. If you want to reflect this point about any of the axes, let's say Y or X, this is what you must do, watch. This is just one point, okay? So here we go, menu, geometry, transformation, and under transformation, you're looking at reflection, okay? I'll just show that again quickly. So we go to menu, geometry, transformation, and we're choosing reflection. First, click that point, and it must say point A. See, it's saying point A, so click that point A, and then choose the axis. The moment you choose the axis, uh, the moment you've chosen axis Y, can you see that it already hovers there, A prime with that dot there. So click the axis and that point A is registered. In the same way, if you go, go to the point A uh, and then go down to X axis, can you see that? The other point is also labeled there. And that's kind of a problem because both are labeled as A prime. So this is the place perhaps you should learn how to uh, label it differently. And so that's A prime, I'm going to make it A double prime. So A double prime is the reflection of the point A about the X axis. A prime is a reflection of the point A about the Y axis. And then you can find the coordinates in the same way. Go to menu, actions, coordinates and equations, hover around the point. And as you can see clearly, it's an X coordinate that is changed in sign. The Y coordinate remains the same. And when you hover around this point, you can see that the Y coordinate is the one that's changed in sign because that's a reflection about the X axis. All right. Now, this is about a single point being reflected about the X axis and the Y axis. What about triangles? Because uh, in the IGCC course, in the exam, you've got to reflect triangles, all right? So let me just delete these points by just hitting undo and getting rid of all this functionality that we did earlier. On the IGCC question paper, the questions on reflections are not about points as such, but about uh, shapes like triangles, okay? Sometimes there are other weird shapes also, but uh, in most cases I've seen triangles. So uh, we draw a triangle as it's given in the question paper, all right? So you can go and adjust the coordinates of the points. 
Uh, first, let's go and mark the coordinates of the points, right? So if I go to actions and coordinates, and here I say, okay, that's point negative five, five, coordinates is negative two and three, and the coordinates of the point A is negative nine, one. So let's say, you know, uh, the coordinates of point A was not negative nine, one, and you just entered it because you went through the shapes and you just picked up a triangle just like that. You can then go and change that, okay? You can just say that's nine, one and not neg negative nine, one, and hit enter, and automatically that triangle moves there. And the coordinates are still here. That, that coordinate should be there. If you want, you can pin it there, okay? So somehow, once you're happy with, with it, you can pin. Uh, that means, yeah, there you go. So you can pin it there so that it doesn't move. Even this point can be pinned. There you go. I can pin the point and it doesn't move. Now, to make it look better, you can just go and uh, add some color, fill color to the uh, triangle. And there's your object that needs to be transformed. And we're talking about reflections in this particular video, all right? So... Again, let's see how we can reflect this triangle about the x-axis or the y-axis the same way as we reflected the point, all right? So we go to menu, uh, geometry, uh, transformation, and let's pick reflection. So we are going to pick the triangle this time. It must say the word triangle ABC, all right? So remember it said all the other things in the point on and all those other points. But hover your mouse till it says triangle ABC. And once you've selected that and then... As you can see, there's some dotted lines happening everywhere, right? So be careful where you're going to. Now, if I just come along the y-axis, it'll say axis y. Click that and that should be the reflection of the triangle ABC about the y-axis, all right? So let's just do that. Let's hit escape and color this triangle quickly to something like uh, the dodge of blue, nice color, right? So as you can see, this is a reflection. The blue triangle is a reflection of the yellow triangle about the y-axis and the point B was on this side of the y-axis, now it's moved here, B dash is here. So let's just get the, their coordinates also, coordinates of the, lab, uh, the reflected uh, triangle. So that's 5 comma 5. This is the, oh, sorry, this one is reflection of C. And there is a reflection of the point A, all right? So that's how you can find the reflection of a triangle about the y-axis. You can do the same thing about the x-axis as I showed you now. There can be a problem when you try to do the same technique for any other line, not necessarily the x-axis or the y-axis as a line of symmetry. Uh, and I'll show you in a minute, okay? So let me just go and delete this. Let's see if I just go right click and can I delete that? Yep, it goes off. So that, let's keep the same triangle and let's just insert a line y equals x. Okay, sometimes this is a very common uh, example, all right? Uh, this line y equals x and sometimes they use y equals negative x or some other line, okay? So I'm just going to go and make it a dotted line so that it... Um, yeah, it looks something like this, all right? So there we go, that's, oh, it didn't come through. Let's do it again. Attributes, you should always make sure that you click enter, okay? So enter, and there you go, that's got it. And maybe even change the color of the line. Uh, there you go. So that's the color of the line. And now if I try to reflect the same, using the same technique, if I go menu, geometry, uh, I say I want to transform that shape, reflection i've picked the triangle look it says triangle abc now when i go to that line it doesn't even pick that line that's because you know that y equals x in that format is a function and not necessarily a line all right i mean for us we look at it as a line but the way it has been programmed the algorithm that has been used to identify functions and geometrical objects is slightly different so it's not going to do this thing the same way okay so like i said you know if you pick the object we already picked the object and if you picked even a side like look if i see pick the side b c even then it will be reflected but it's not picking because those are geometrical objects right this is a line drawn through a function so there's a way around it. What we can do is that we can just draw a line over this line. All right. So let's go a geometrical line that is. Okay. So let's go geometry, points and lines, and make sure that you draw a line or even a line segment. Let's just draw a line. Okay. So make sure that point is on the line. All right. And with that reference y equals x, you've drawn another point on the line. And there you've got that point on the line. And now maybe you can change the color of that line also. If you're as picky as I am. And there you've got that red color line. And now... If you try to reflect that um, triangle, it should work. So transformation, reflection of this triangle about that line, y equals x. And there we got that, all right? And now because we can't see it, let's just change this thing to something like 11. And there you can see that. And let's just change the color of the reflected triangle again. Uh, dodge blue looks nice. And quickly you can find out the coordinates of 
the reflected triangle. There you go. That's one comma nine, and that's the coordinates of B, and the coordinates of C is that. That's C prime there. Okay, there you go. So let's be careful with these. When there are too many coordinates, it, uh, it can get a little crowded. So just be careful of that. So this is A, and that's the reflection of A uh, about the line Y equals X. This is B, and that's the reflection of B about the line uh, Y equals X. And so that's the reflection of C and uh, about the line Y equals X. And so you can do the same thing for the other lines, Y equals uh, negative X, or if it's a different line, okay, if something like Y equals 3X plus 4, draw the line as a function or a relation, and then using the geometry tools, try and draw a line over that because otherwise it's not going to work. So I hope that this video is useful. On the next video, we're going to talk about the second transformation. See you there.